Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I'm going to continue my discussions uh, from the previous video um, on this uh, new WMO, World Meteorological Organization, um, report um, called The Global Climate 2015 to 2019. So I'm just going to get right into it uh, where I left off from the previous uh, video. Okay, so this is the report. Public, uh, publicly available. So I was so here. I'm here in the report now. One of the things I could knock is I, the detail here. It's a bit fuzzy. Like I'm not sure why they couldn't get a you know much clearer uh, diagram. I mean the scale is a bit fuzzy. But anyway, this is the difference in monthly average precipitation totals between um, the two periods. So 2015 to 2019 versus. 2011 to 2015. So the the brown areas are the dry areas. So lots of different dry areas here and extremely dry areas. And this is very concerning because these are in the uh, Amazon rainforest. And of course, Australia, you know, one of the reasons we've had so many wildfires there is the heat waves and the drying out of the region. And then the wetter areas are here. Um, are the uh, blue scale, you know, with so, you know, a lot of extremes. It goes from the driest to the wettest to the driest to the wettest uh, here. And uh, yeah, so you can see the trends here, for example, you know, you know, lots of rainfall in the southern U.S. And that's continuing, of course, you know, some areas, for example, uh, Michigan, huge amounts of rainfall, uh, a couple dam failures in Midland and uh, draining of a uh, lake, you know, and lo lots of lots of uh, flooding, lots of water issues. This is uh, this is total precipitation for 2015 to 2019, um, expressed as a percentile of the 1951 to 2010 reference period. So the driest 20% is the brown, and the wettest 20% is the green. Okay, so what you can see is you can see the um, you know the wettest areas here again in the U.S. You know lots of wet areas in the northern hemisphere with some drier areas and then drying here and, and in these regions. So there's lots of data um, in this report. Um, they did some uh, analysis. So this is these are the economic losses in in um, blue and then the mortality rates in yellow. And again, it's you can make out all the numbers, but it's a bit fuzzy, and I'm not sure why. Um, I mean, this appeared in the report. I mean, this is a note to the WMO. Uh, you know, work on your figures a bit, but the, the data is all there. So this was um, they analyzed 99, almost 100 extreme weather events on the basis of mortality and economic losses. Okay, um, this is uh, this is uh, Europe. So this is showing, and this is a bit misleading because I think this scale should be just the ranking and not Celsius. It's a ranking of the highest June and July 2019 temperatures in Europe since 1950. So the red areas, this should be the ranking. So, so the red areas, the dark red areas all set records. And, uh, you know, the lighter red areas almost set records. They were in second place and the orange in third place and yellow in fourth place, etc. So widespread heat in heat waves in Europe in this period of reporting um, and uh, serious drought in Australia, mostly in the southeastern part of Australia. This was the period 2017 to 2019. And of course, that resulted in these huge wildfires in Australia. Um, this shows an image of the camp fire in California, which um, burned down the, the town of Paradise. Um, these are prominent events of all types from 2015 to 2019. So they divided up, there's tropical cyclones. And of course we had, you know, Hurricane Matthew in 2016, which hit Haiti you know, and the U.S. and then uh, Hurricane Harvey, of course, Texas. It's the one that sort of sat around on Texas and it passed through over five days. It was half in the water, half on land, so it didn't lose its strength. 
and it just kind of moved around at a mile an hour or two miles an hour and did tremendous damage on the, to the U.S. And then, of course, we had Hurricane Irma um, and uh, Hurricane Maria, and this was the one that uh, hit Puerto Rico and caused huge numbers of deaths and uh, economic damages. And there's a couple uh, Pacific in, in the uh, you know, Southwest Indian Ocean. There's, this is flooding. It breaks down the different regions you know, where there's lots of flooding. Uh, and so it talks about the death rates and the, uh, the number of deaths and the economic cost in U.S. billion, U.S. 14 billion. You know, this flooding, for example, in China. We've got Bangladesh. We've got Sierra Leone landslide, Japan, India. So, you know, 1.4 million people displaced, 5.4 million people infected, affected in some way. Um, okay, this, so there's huge numbers of, of uh, extreme weather events, storms and tornadoes here, hailstorms and tornadoes and windstorms, et cetera. And then of course, uh, heat waves, the, the various heat waves, um, Pakistan, South Africa, but in Europe, Australia um, and, and Europe again. Okay, uh, you know, temperatures up to 46 degrees Celsius. Okay, uh, and then of course, uh, when you get heat waves, you get droughts. So these are some of the droughts, uh, Central American, South America, Caribbean, Africa, Australia, etc. And uh, wildfires, uh, the Fort McMurray wildfire in Alberta in May 2016, the Greece wildfires, Indonesia wildfires, the one in California that took out the town of Paradise, um, and Eastern Australia um, in 2019. And then there are some cold events in some different places. Um, okay, now in terms of the attribution, they do a lot of attribution studies on these events. So in the period 2015 to 2018, there were 94 events looked at and 76 of those were definite anthropogenic influence, either directly or indirectly. Okay, I'm surprised that it's not all 94. Okay, uh, this is the undernourished people in the world. So 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018. So steady increases in people that just are undernourished. They don't get the proper food and nutrients. This is, um, this is uh, crop um, percentage of decades, a decade is a 10 day period with drought. So severe drought is the red, the, the, the dark red here in these regions here. And, uh, you know, other, as you get to lighter colors, there's less and less drought. So lots of crops being affected by droughts here. Um, when, when there's uh, severe reductions of agriculture agricultural uh, production in those regions. This is the change in the number of heat waves, um, heat wave exposure events, millions per year, okay. Heat wave exposure events, millions of people uh, affected per year. So you can see, you know, a rapid rise from 2000 to now. You know, there's some noise, but generally the trend is, is up you know, strongly, strong increase. There's more and more oxygen minimum zones or so-called hypoxic um, regions of the ocean. Um, so coastal sites are in red. So lots of coastlines have, uh, the oxygen concentrations are less than two milligrams per liter. And, of, and this is usually in the shallow water on the continental shelf off the coastlines and this causes you know, this lack of oxygen um, means that fish can't live in those regions. So there's more and more of these coastal regions that are oxygen deficient. And um, yeah, so th and there's also some areas in the, um, you know, in, in the uh, here, the, these areas here going down to, so this is 200 meter depth. And you can see, you know, as you, you this is the scale here of oxygen, so it's all under two milligrams per liter. So these are anoxic regions as well, and they're 
you know, off the they're, they're more extensive, not coast non coastline ones. Okay, so basically, so that's the gist of this report. Okay, this uh, WMO report, and uh, since I've got a few minutes, um, might as well just give you an update on the coronavirus. So this is the, let me see if there, the screen has been refreshed. Okay, so this is the Johns Hopkins University of Medicine. Um, just Google John, Google that, Johns Hopkins University of Medicine coronavirus map, and then you can see the total uh, global cases and, uh, you know, US 1.662 million. Brazil just passed Russia. Um, Brazil and Russia are ex increasing extremely quickly. And then we've got the UK and Spain and Italy, of course, here. And, uh, you know, Canada is not doing so well. I mean, we, we flattened, the curve flattened, started to drop a little bit, but it's starting to rise up again. And, uh, you know, I really think that, um, you know, I mean, and we have the the rule, the, the of course, every you know most countries have the two meter distancing rule, but uh, you know people are getting tired and there's a bit of fatigue, so people are not following that uh, so much. And uh, you know I think the key thing is is uh, you know I talked about this in previous videos that the um, most infections are indoor indoor environments. Very few are outdoors. So, you know, the rule should be very simple, two meter or, or six feet uh, separation, you know, social or physical distancing, um, masks uh, inside, okay? And if you're in groups of people outside where you can't maintain that two meters, then definitely masks. And, you know, I think that should become mandatory. And, uh, you know, many countries have suppress the curve um, and, you know, using, using those, uh, you know, th th those simple rules. And, you know, the concern is, you know, remember that, you know, in 1918, there were three waves and the second wave. So the first wave was similar to the timing was similar to the one now. And then the second wave came in the fall. But, you know, those curves were all suppressed in the summers and but remember people we didn't have air conditioning back then so people had windows open in their houses with no air conditioning and there was lots of ventilation and I think that contributed a lot into into um, flattening or reducing the, those curves of the first wave but you know this summer you know with countries opening up and you know because of Climate change, of course, we're getting a lot more extensive heat waves. And when there's extensive heat waves, everybody's inside with air conditioning. So when there's public um, spaces with lots of people inside with air conditioning, studies have shown that the virus can spread quickly. So, you know, it is um, the concern is that the curve doesn't get flattened. You know, it's sort of a cascading um, situation. You know, we get um, we get the coronavirus uh, aerosol significantly drop that exacerbates the the heat waves, and the heat waves require people to be indoors with air conditioning. But if they're indoors, you know, with air conditioning in the summer, then the risk can be much higher of spreading, you know, the virus in public places, especially if people are not wearing masks. So I think, you know, masks are just common sense. Now, um, the masks aren't the most comfortable thing to wear. In fact, the, the N95 mask, you know, put one on, go for a walk, if you can, you know, and it's very hard to breathe. You know, you take one off, you start coughing just because it's too hot, you know, you're walking around. So the surgical mask, um, you know, may be a better bet. I mean, a mask is no good if, if people aren't going to wear it. Anyway, thank you uh, for, for listening and uh, stay safe out there. Bye for now.